So a lot of people have started to ask me about my settings and my flight setup. And so I'm going to start here and we're going to start with some parts that are outside the computer. First off, this is my gaming router. And I want you to notice that that gaming router is directly hardwired in here. And this is a 30 gig cable, I believe, is what that particular cable is. It was expensive, but it's a direct connection. Now, there's nothing else plugged into that router at all. And as far as a wireless network, there's only one thing on that wireless network. And that is it right there, that Quest headset. Nothing else in my house is allowed to connect to that router. And this computer is the only thing that's on the network that it's on. Now, this is again my setup. I have the Alpha flight controls for my yoke. I have a throttle quadrant on the side of it here. Then I have this beautiful stick, the Velocity One flight stick, which I, I absolutely love this. I got one for my brother as well. And it has its throttle quadrant here. Rudder pedals down there. Gaming keyboard, hardwired, not wireless. Gaming mouse, hardwired, not wireless. Why? Because the wireless interferes with the Quest. Yes, it does. Now, you see there is a cable plugged in. That's for charging and for transferring my videos to the computer. That's the only purpose of that cable. That cable is to charge my headset and to uh, transfer videos over and there's my cooling fan of course but so that is my setup and those I think are important parts the keyboard and the w mouse being hardwired really made a big difference I can't believe how much difference it made with skips and interference once I got rid of my wireless mouse and keyboard um, Everything else, of course, is hardwired in here. And so now we're going to get into the game and the computer settings. But this part is important. Okay, so now we are within the Quest headset, if you haven't guessed. This is not my living room or my basement. <laughs> well, I wish it was all. Dang, this is so awesome. Anyhow, so here we go. So Quest settings. There really aren't a whole lot in here that I ever really change or play with. Now, under camera, I use these for my recording. I don't use image stabilization. I use the 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second frame rate, and 15 for my video compression quality. There really isn't anything else in here. Um, I don't use Quest, so there's nothing here. Now, I turn this off all the time, and it turns itself on all the time. So it doesn't really matter either way, because I don't use it. But there really, like I said, aren't any other settings within the Quest. So virtual desktop is my go-to tool. So we're going to launch her up here. And then my quest controller because now i can use my mouse um i don't use the quest controllers for anything other than to start and stop recording so hopefully this will be okay for you guys to see and you'll be able to get everything that i have in here now i do have the quest software installed on uh, the Oculus software installed on my computer. It has to be in order to get everything set up initially and in order to allow the connection with the computer to transfer videos. But that's it. I do not run it. I do not turn it on. I don't start it. The settings that are within the Oculus app have no bearing on my flying at all because you can make all the changes you want in here. It does not affect Steam VR or virtual desktop. So, right now, like I said, we're using virtual desktop. Now, if you look, there's nothing running on this computer except for the virtual desktop streamer and this, which has been covered in other videos by myself and others, this Intelligent Standby Cleaner, which is a tool that frees up memory after a while. If your memory starts to get bogged down, it kind of flushes it. And then the virtual desktop streamer. Now, there aren't a lot of settings within here. 
the settings for this are actually once you launch it. So I'm not going to spend much time there. But let's go ahead and we're going to start. And again, my computer really doesn't do anything. <laughs> now, I got a couple of games on here that I've tried, but I don't really play them. Um, the MSI Utility, the NVIDIA Profiler. I've tried all these, but for the most part, I don't have any of them running or doing anything on the game. This I still use. I use this because I find the resolution is better with when I use this, but also because of the colors. Uh, you know, I don't like the default colors that are in the sim. I like to change them a little bit and get rid of some of the green and so forth. And so that's really what I use that for. And the sunglasses. I love being able to put sunglasses on. <laughs> so let's take a look at computer settings first. Okay, so game mode, you notice, is turned off. I do not have game mode turned on. Graphics. I have my HAGS turned on. My variable refresh rate turned on and optimizations for Windows games, which is fairly new. So if you don't have a recent update version of Windows, you might not see this one. Uh, but I have all those on. Of course, a lot of people have already covered this in many videos. Flight, uh, Flight Simulator is set to high performance. The Xbox and Xbox control panel, Xbox toolbar, are not running on my system. I don't want them interfering. The NVIDIA control panel, I use that, but I don't use the other parts of the NVIDIA, the control uh, interface. I don't use that at all. So... These are more or less all default here under the global settings. Program settings, and I'm, I'll read them off in case you can't read them too easy on the screen. But I have image scaling turned on and set at 90%. So image scaling for Flight Sim is on and set to 90. Anisotropic filtering is turned on to 8 times here. I don't have it turned, or actually I think I have it on two times in the game, but we'll double check. But it's set to 8x here. FXAA is off. Gamma correction off. Again, because I like to control my gamma, my colors, and everything through the OpenXR toolkit. Anti-aliasing mode, application controlled. Default, 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 all the way down. Low latency mode is turned on. Now, I have my CUDAs and my GPUs set here to global setting all because those are the only ones that register on my NVIDIA because I uninstalled the driver for the onboard graphics. So my onboard graphics does not show up as a choice here because it's not running. There's no driver for it. Therefore, I never have to worry about choosing my graphics because... Whether I pick all or use these, it's the same because I uninstalled the other one. Now, I had to do that in the beginning because if I didn't, when I was using programs like Steam VR, my screen would go black. Uh, again, low latency mode on, uh, default, 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 power management, maximum performance. Then default, negative, LO, uh, anis well, first, texture filtering, anisotropic on, negative LOD allow texture filtering quality performance, trilinear optimization on, threaded optimization on. I find that with the latest graphics drivers, the latest updates to the sim, and the latest updates to the operating system itself, I find now that threaded optimization does seem to help. Uh, triple buffering off, vertical sync set to fast, and virtual pre-rendered frames set to one. Those are the settings within my control panel. Now we have to actually get into VR mode to show you 
the OpenXR settings, the Steam VR settings, and the desktop streamer settings. So first what we'll do is we'll look at the in-game settings. Now, let me, as this is loading, let me actually show you, do mention a couple other things. So this is my community shortcut folder. And I have this on my desktop as well as what I call my backup. And this is where I keep most of my aircraft, which is, you can see, about 44 gigabits now of aircraft and paint schemes and so forth. I do not keep them all in my community folder. My community folder has just a few. And actually, there's more in here right now than I normally do. Um, because this... This, to me, is, is something that's usually missed in all the advice, and I don't know why, because it just it's common sense if you know computers, okay? Every single time you launch Flight Simulator, everything that is in this folder gets loaded. Whether you're going to use it or not, it is loaded and taken up resources in your game. So if you've got a whole bunch of aircraft in here, it may not be a big deal depending on, I mean, if you've got a lot of the real heavy-duty aircraft, you know, the heavies, the 737s, the Airbuses, those guys, then that's a different story. But if you've got a whole lot of airports in here and scenery, it's all getting loaded in the background. And if you're not flying there, why load it? Why take up the resources? Um, you know, again, same thing with aircraft. I have a lot of aircraft, but I don't keep them all in this community folder because it has to launch all the time. And so I don't see any reason to load it. And, and I think that might be a big thing that still helps out as well. The other reason why I like having this here is because clicking two levels up to the local cache gives you this user config file. There's a lot of videos about this file out there and making changes to it to help your virtual reality settings like down here, the post-processing and so forth. But here's the thing about this particular file. Whenever you're in Flight Sim and you come up here to Options and you go here and you make a change here, it makes that change in this file. So, good and bad to that. One is if you get settings you like and you make changes, sometimes it's not always easy to get back to them. Sometimes when you reload the game, this file will get overwritten by the sim, and, and we've all experienced this, I'm sure, at least the majority of us have, where you've launched it and certain settings are not where you left them. So. Once I have my settings where I like them, you see the R here that nothing else has? That means read only. And you do that by hitting properties, right-clicking with your mouse, hitting properties, and changing it to read only. So I leave this in read only mode all the time. When I'm in my game, I will make changes occasionally. Like if I'm flying into cities, I'll turn maybe my trees down and my buildings up. But then when I come back in the next time, I know that everything will be right back here on medium. If I am flying at nighttime, I will turn my light shafts up and I will turn things like trees and bushes down because you can't really see them at night anyhow uh, or water waves. So but then when I come back in the next day, I know my settings will be right back where I left them because that file is read only. Now, if there is a setting in here that I like, then I have to go back. I change that file to, I remove the read-only attribute, make my settings, save it, and then go back and turn it back on to read-only. So, and that way my settings stay where I want them. The game doesn't interfere with them. Updates don't interfere with them. If I change them for a flight, I know when I come back, it's going to perform the next day the same way because that file is locked and can't be changed. So, that being said, let's get to the settings. The VR, well, the PC settings, I know some of these make a difference, and I don't really mess with any of them, but I do leave this on DirectX 12. The other ones, yeah, I don't really, you know, VSync on, off, and so forth. I don't know how much of these really make a difference once you're into VR, so I don't really mess with them. If I got VR working well, then I'm not going to change settings here. 
So on the VR, I have an NVIDIA graphics card. It's a 3070 RTX, not the TI. Now, you saw my system in the beginning. It's a laptop, which is why I fly virtual reality, because I can't see anything on a 14-inch screen. And this particular model laptop does not have any good ports, so I can't really hook up a decent monitor, which is also why I don't use the cable for my... Quest and why I returned the Reverb G2 when I received it because I couldn't use it without the right ports. Um, so at this moment, I'm going to stop this recording real quickly and then restart it because I'll tell you when I come back. Okay, so so now I'm back uh, and you probably didn't know I was gone. Anyhow, uh, I do that occasionally because. When my recordings get too long on the Quest, sometimes it locks up the recording and then the recording gets corrupted and I lose everything that I recorded. And I don't want to lose that at this point. So, again, I have a RTX 3070, so that allows me to use the NVIDIA DLSS setting. The resolution, I have it set to auto. The AAMD and world scale are on the default of 100. Reprojection, depth, and motion works very well with the latest graphics driver. That changes <laughs> sometimes depending on the NVIDIA graphics driver. But right now, it's working really well. The reflex low latency on plus boost and global rendering quality is custom. Terrain level of detail is down at 35. I usually go pretty fast and pretty low, and I don't really need to see it. I'd rather have it be smooth. Besides, with grass and bushes on medium, it kind of hides that. Off-screen, off pre-caching high. Terrain vector data high. Buildings, trees, and grasses and bushes, medium, all three of those. But again, they may change. If I'm out in the mountains, I might put my trees in on high. When I'm in the city, I'll turn the trees down and put the buildings on high. Uh, object level of detail, 70 seems to be a nice number here for me. Volumetric clouds, medium. Texture resolution, medium. Now, the clouds is another one that kind of I play with occasionally because if you have really, really overcast skies and you have this up on high or ultra, that's an awful lot of rendering just for puffy whiteness. And that to me is kind of silly. Medium and low, I mean, I don't expect this thing to look so much like I'm looking out my dang window that I'm getting tears in my eyes. You know, it's it's a sim, and it's good enough to for me. I'm not up at the clouds all that often, and they look fine in my videos. I'm happy with them, so medium is good. Texture resolution I find on medium lately is, well, you've seen my videos. It's pretty decent. Anastrotropic filtering, remember in the... NVIDIA, I said I had that, I showed that was at 8, and here it's at 2, which gives me my 16. Texture super sampling is at 6 by 6. Texture synthesis is on high. Water waves medium. Again, if I'm flying at night, I might turn that down. If I'm flying near a lot of water, uh, I might fly, turn it up, especially if, if I'm flying uh, amphibious or something. Shadow maps, I've Actually, this is the default that's in my file right now. So every time I restart, it's at 1024. But I've actually been bumping this up a little bit. Terrain shadows, I leave off. I don't see a whole lot of difference unless I crank this way up and then my performance goes down. Contact shadows, medium. Windshield, medium. Ambient occlusion, low. Cube map, 128. Ray marched, medium. Light shafts, low. Bloom is off now. Glass cockpit is on medium. So those are the settings within VR. The sound settings, I wish this would stay where I put it, but I they say that you should change this off of your default to help with um, sputtering. But the problem, too, is if you do this and you fly VR, sometimes you don't get the sound in your headsets. And so... You know, that's kind of a pain. Um, everything else is just a default right now. I've played with volumes and stuff, but I never really leave them any place. <laughs> uh, traffic, I don't have much turned on at all. Some vehicles, some ground aircraft, you know, boats, cars, things like that. 
again, you know, if I was flying the heavies around the airports and doing airliners, then I would probably change this a little bit. But if, if you've watched my videos, you see, I mean, by the time I see a car on the road, um, um, it's gone. So it's, it doesn't make sense to really tie up resources for that. Uh, now, right now, my photogrammetry is turned on, and that is unusual for me. I normally will have this completely turned off, especially around the cities. But I was trying it the other day when I was in a night setting. And so I'm turning it back off here now. But when I was flying at night, I turned it on because with the way I fly, photogrammetry on my system really looks yucky. It looks kind of bleh. And so I don't like to turn that on. But it was nighttime, so I thought it would add to the uh, the video. Uh, flight model, all on realism, realistic, miscellaneous, nothing really to look at in any of these, right? There's no changes to look at here and nothing here. And again, I don't use controllers or binding, you know, my, uh, VR controllers at all. They're, they're turned off and down on the floor by my feet where I can grab one if I need to turn the recording on and off. But other than that, um, and I haven't tried any of this stuff, replay tool, low power, or reorder tool. So those are the settings that are in the game. I hope I didn't forget anything. Um, if I did, let me know, and we'll, we'll add it in the comments or another thing. So now here's another reason why I like this as far as launching. So this virtual desktop is already running. And so it's so easy to get into a flight and a game. And actually, you know what? This is really kind of funny. But lately I've been noticing that. And it may just be because I'm on a beta version, I think, right now, 30.12. But when I pick an aircraft, if I come back to that aircraft the next day and try and fly, sometimes it'll crash on me when I hit fly. <laughs> and usually it'll be when this is grayed out even though i can click on it and so it's kind of weird but we're gonna change aircraft come back and we should be good uh let me check my throttle here now i don't see my throttle on my flight stick obviously i'm wearing my quest headset and i showed to you in the beginning i have a rudder pedal i have the cockpit all set up and let me turn this down a little bit and um I've been doing this for so long and I have everything lined up so that I know where my cockpit is lined up. I mean, if I'm looking in front of me, okay, there's my stick. Well, if I put my hand on it, there's my hand, you know, I'm right on it all the time because I know exactly where these silly things are, you know, my just by feel. So anyways, um, yeah, I don't use, I've gotten questions on that, bindings and stuff, and I don't use those, so I couldn't tell you. But as far as getting into VR, we click the button here. It's going to launch. We're going to be in the VR loading construct in a second. Boom. I'll grab my controller again so I can zero in my location. And then... We're going to click on within the game window and we hit this and control tab and we are now in. we hit space and yes, control is not supported. It doesn't matter. I don't use it. So now I am within VR, obviously. So let's go to first. Okay, now I'm going to go to the end here real quickly and just increase the menu timeout. Otherwise, we won't have time to look at all of it. <laughs> okay, so upscaling NIS, anamorphic off. With my current settings, the size is 95%, 2060, 2140. Now, that can be very, very different for other people. And I apologize for the bumping as I'm talking. But that has to do with many other settings. Sharpness 70, fixed foveated off, turbo mode off, frame rate throttling off. Under appearance, I have my sunglasses on right now and contrast and brightness and colors. Those are personal preferences. 
nothing on their inputs. And override resolution, yes, display resolution, 2169, 2253. And then, of course, my colors, again, are, you know, really personal preferences. But override resolution is on. 2169, 2253 are the numbers I'm getting with my current settings. And now this is the latest version of the toolkit. This is 1.2.4. So now we're going to exit that. Now i got to grab my other VR controller so that we can get into the Steam um, yeah, the Steam menu first. We'll do the Steam menu first. Here we get the controller to turn on. There we go. Video settings. Okay. So now there's, first off, you got multiple. You have your original settings, and the refresh rate of 80 hertz is coming from the virtual Steam, uh, Steam uh, virtual desktop, sorry. <laughs> Everything here is set to normal, auto and off for the super sampling. Now, there's pre per application. Now, these settings, you will not ever get to this if you are not in virtual reality mode. Now, this is set at 100%, which is just the defaults, the default, and the default. Default and the default. Now, we'll go to... Okay, here. And under here. Now, these settings are streaming from the desktop. Somewhat matter, but not as much as the streaming ones, obviously. But just to be fair, I want to show you. So environment quality is on high. Of course, the environment, I think, that we're talking about, like in here right now. Frame rate here is set at 90. Desktop, 60. Again, I'm not sure I'm actually involved in the game and stuff itself. Yeah, boost clock rates and so forth. And then we got oh, the streaming. Okay, right now is on high. I've played with this different settings, and it works good on some of these lower settings. You just have to compensate within the game. But right now I'm on high, 3070. That has the bearing on those resolutions that I was showing you within the V and the um, OpenXR toolkit. Again, I had set my frame rate to 80 here. Seems to be playing very nicely with that. VR bitrate 100, sharpening 85, gamma 1. Synchronous space warp, always enabled. Video buffering, enabled. And track controllers is, is enabled by default, and I just leave it there. Uh, you can see what the settings are down here and where we're at. CPU 28, GPU 43, but we're not in VR right now, so... We go back to our VR, and now we can't really look at those settings. But now you can get an idea here on performance, right? I think so. We um, stop. There we go. Come on. All right. And uh, so, like I said, let's check it. You know, you'll see this is the performance with those settings right there. And that building is so close to this strip. <laughs> and you can get an idea of what it's like for performance. For smoothness and graphics quality. as we fly around here in the Hughes Racer. And for now, I'll fly at a relatively normal height because I know this is probably how most people will be flying. They're not gonna be racing below the trees like myself. So this is really kind of what you wanna see, right? How does it look up here? Now, just so you're aware, I did not turn my fans on and which means my system will get hot and if I fly for about 20 minutes it'll start to really start stuttering because of the overheating and so I would normally have my fans running here <laughs> and not just the uh, flight like this without them it is a beautiful plane I love the uh, Hughes Racer so there you go I think that's all my settings see like I said oh I'm Kind of sitting high here. I didn't realize my head was going through the canopy. <laughs> um, you know, to me, those clouds are fine. Why do I need them any better than that? You know, 
hey, uh, you know, I think that looks fine. <laughs> I really don't need it to be a whole lot better. Um, I can see pretty good in the distance. I can make out lakes. I can make out rivers. I can make out towns. Now, right now, it's not the clearest because of the time of day and everything. You know, the sun doesn't always help. And I do have the sunglasses on. But I can tell you one thing. If there's a um, airport and it's flashing a beacon, I can see that thing from a pretty darn good distance, even at the daytime. So, you know, I have a lot of fun flying. It's, I find it to be very immersive. I find the settings to be more than adequate for me. Again, I'm not in here expecting this thing to be like I'm sitting in a, a real airplane. First off, that's a dead giveaway right there. Would one of you airplane developers fix this, please? <laughs> Look at that. I don't want to be an invisible pilot, man. Give us a pilot silhouette. It would be so easy to put something in there, wouldn't it? I don't know. I mean, God, they can put a person in the plane. Why can't they put a shadow? Anyways, um, you can see the performance here and I. You can see what I'm getting. And uh, let's see. These are probably high-tension wires, right? So I probably can't do a low burn on here because I'll probably be at the level of the antenna towers. Oh, yeah. Those are antenna towers, yeah. So we don't want to... Okay, going a little fast here. Whoops, overstressed. <laughs> Yeah, I knew it. I could tell by the buffeting, um, <laughs> but that's all right. We we accomplished what we needed to, right? Uh, I hope so. Um, I hope this helps you. If there's any settings that I didn't cover, um, please let me know, and I will try and cover them. I just I I don't know what else there is in the game or outside of the game. Um, that I could actually cover. Like I said, the the Oculus software is is oops, running. We go back to the desktop here. I can hit Control Tab to end the VR session. Um, I don't run any other tools now. I have tried this process lasso. We used to use this a lot and. I'm still not sure. If you do ever try this out, it cannot be running when you launch Flight Sim. It'll crash it. You have to actually stop it and then rerun it. What that does is a lot of times people will tell you, whoops, not that, sorry. When you're flying, if you want to stop stutters, and it, it's his valid advice, and it's still valid advice, is you come into your task manager you go to the details on the flight sim process. You come in here and you set priority to above normal, possibly high. Never real time. Don't ever go real time. <laughs> um, and some people will tell you to set affinity and so forth as well. So, and that's that's all very helpful. It's all good. It can definitely help with stuttering in some cases. The biggest problem is once you close Flight Simulator and relaunch it, that setting goes away. It does not stay there. It's not a resident setting. So this process lasso, when this is running, actually allows you to set it there, and it leaves it setting. So because I have made that change in process lasso previously, if I was to launch this right now, the governor would kick in and it would make those changes and it would keep them there but like i said <laughs> if that's running when you launch flight sim flight sim doesn't launch so you'd have to shut it off to launch it anyways um and then turn it on and sometimes i do it depends but at this point i'm not sure if flight sim really needs it anymore it seems to be doing pretty good without it um the g-force experience i don't run any of the Oh, this is the first time I've launched it since the last video uh, driver. I don't run any of the stuff within here. Uh, sorry. Um, the scaler in here and the, uh, the tools for recording and so forth, obviously, because I haven't launched it since the last time I did a driver update a couple of weeks ago. So obviously I don't use it <laughs> because it's just now updating to where it was um yada 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 blah 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 so in here you know none of this stuff i don't 
I don't use any of it. I don't want any of it on, none of it on. It is nice to know this information, to know that your system is ready and capable of doing these different things. You know, but I don't want to change anything in here. I don't even want that running. Um, so I would make sure even in my task manager that that does not stay running now and because I don't want it running. Same thing with the Xbox app. I don't run it. I don't have anything within it turned on or enabled. So virtual desktop streamer settings, Steam VR settings, in-game settings, NVIDIA control panel settings, Windows system settings, and some of the tips, like I mentioned, about keeping your community folder emptied unless this, you know, other than the files you actually want to fly with, uh, making your folder read only under the local cache or user config so that the game doesn't change it on you once you have it set where you like it. Okay. Um, I don't know. Can you think of anything else? Um, I really can't think of anything else for settings. If you guys can, let me oh, please. And, uh, whoops. That's because it was loading when I tried to switch to it. <laughs> That's a fun plane right there. The Cub, the, uh, there's a Monster NX Cub that's available on flightsim.to. <laughs> man, oh man, fantastic aircraft, beautiful aircrafts. Uh, there's so many, and they're all free. So many. I mean, there's a lot of great paid ones, but boy, there are so many incredible free aircraft out there. It's not even funny. This is a nice looking airport, huh? What do we got here? So you can see too. I mean, come on, start up. Here we go. We got um. Some really oh no, oh, dang it! Don't you hate that? My throttle was up. Um, but I was just gonna point out the look of the graphics. Oh, you know what? Last thing I do once we get this loaded again and ready is I'll grab my phone and see if I can do a through the lens view as well for you because I know that it's nice to see that. But what I was gonna point out was the quality here. You know, I probably lost my guy out there. Where was my canopy? Where's the canopy control on this one? There you go. There we go. Oh no, he's there. Okay. Well, hopefully he'll move. Um, but I was just going to point out, you know, right now my buildings and trees and ground are medium. And yeah, does it look like it would if I was sitting in an airplane right now in the real world? Well, no, it's a simulator. Does it look good enough for me? Am I happy with it? Hell yeah, it's a simulator. <laughs> so, let's um, get our canopy closed here, our brakes off, and let's get past Chico's buddy over here. Let's see if we try not to clip him with the wing. Oh, man. You dummy. What were you standing there for anyways? What do you think? These things got reverse? What the hell's wrong with you? There's no reverse on this. You silly person. Silly, silly person. Um, you know, here we are. We'll try. This is a, just a little more sampling here. You know, low on the ground. Again, not a very busy airport, obviously. Not a big airport. But, you know, I don't demonstrate that type of flying or that type of graphics because I don't fly it and I don't tune my game for that. I tune it for this type of flying. Whoops, I'm off the runway. <laughs> That's all right. We're just playing around now anyways. Right? So without stressing it out now, let's just take a nice last little leisurely fly by the airport. I mean, yeah, I... <laughs> This looks real to me. You know, it's good enough. I, I have no issues with this. Uh, yes, my level of detail for my ground is down on 35, so maybe it's not the best. But, I mean, I'm not 
I really can't complain about this 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 quality and this performance when I'm flying. Um, and if you can't either, then my settings will help, I hope. All right. Hey, thanks, everybody, for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the skies.